Are you a small business entrepreneur, business coach who is stuck at five figures? You're trying to figure out, yo, how can I get to six figures? How can I get to seven figures? You know what? You might be thinking that it's going to take you to get to six figures in a year, but how about if you did it in a month? How about if you did it in a week? How about if you did it in one day? But listen here, let me tell you. The guest that we have today is going to teach you how you can increase your revenue by 1,280% in only four moves. And I did not make that number up. That is an actual factual number. Listen, when I tell you that this interview right here is going to change your whole entire life. You know what? Let's get to the intro. Hey, so this episode of Inside the Vault is sponsored by Mailbox Millionaire Academy, the number one commercial real estate credit mentorship program for real estate professionals looking to take their real estate business to the next level. See, look, a lot of people want to get into real estate, but they don't want to deal with the hassle of tenants, clogged toilets, trash, leaky sinks. This is why you need to learn how to invest in the number one performing real estate asset, which is not what you think. It's actually self-storage facilities. You can get all the benefits of owning real estate with less headaches, and most importantly, you'll get more cash flow. If you think you need a ton of money to start, well, that is absolutely false. My guy, Ramel, who's the lead instructor at Mailbox Millionaire Academy, teaches you how to purchase commercial real estate with, guess what? No money down strategies, no money out of your pocket. So no matter where you are in your entrepreneurship journey, you can get started. So what I need you to do is I need you to text VAULT to 347 347- Four two nine six four nine six. Register for the free training that Ramel is having, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, let's get to the episode. Pay attention and listen. We about to teach class inside the boat. My man asks cash to get your man right. Thursday night, eight p.m. You see him change your life. Millionaire mind set the best on earth. Blueprints to wealth and not a network. To get it while you can and he's standing right here. Just come inside the boat and see black. All right, y'all, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet where we are giving you the insider's guide to how to maximize your life, live your best life, be financially free, all of the above, and build wealth for you and your family. Uh, When I tell you that this next interview is going to change your whole life, I have the OG, the guy who is helping transform lives on a daily basis. He's going to teach you how you could exponentially grow your income by 1,280% in only four moves. And I am a living testament. Let me tell you, this man has literally changed my life, my family's life, um, really uh, giving me the confidence. And I know y'all looking like, Ash, what are you talking about? I know you have the confidence. But here's the thing, right? A lot of times when you are the top of the bottom, you get comfortable, right? You get to a space where you're like, man, I'm killing it, I'm crushing it, and you get comfortable and you chill. But when you realize that you are not maxing out your greatness, and then you get introduced to somebody that actually helps you realize that all you gotta be is you, right? It ain't even about doing. All you gotta be is you to max out. We have the Myron Golden in the building. What's up, bro? Brother. I appreciate you, man. Right Thank you, you so man. much right for uh, being here with us. Um, literally, man, you changed my life, right? And so, you know, you know, I, I have the same story David Chance has. Um, you know, I'm I'm at I'm at a conference. I'm watching one of my friends get on stage. He's looking. He he's doing some stuff that I ain't never seen him do before. You know, he 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 does. He's doing all, like he's on stage. He's moving. I'm like I ain't never seen him do this. Then he gets off stage. He said, Ash, yo, come with me. I'm going downstairs. I'm like, all right. I go downstairs. He's in a breakout room. And I see all these people signing up for his program. And he made, I think, like $1.5 million on, like, on the spot. And I find out where he getting all the sauce from. 
Then I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm hearing about Myron. I'm I'm you know I'm I'm in Clubhouse. I'm listening. I'm like, yo, this guy's sharp. I'm looking him up, taking up all the YouTube stuff. I'm you know I'm watching interviews. I say, let me join a challenge. Join a challenge. Change my life. Wow. I'm talking about change my life. Wow. But I still had this self doubt. Mm. I still had this. I'm trying to find reasons why you not changing my life. I'm like, nah, it, nah. It, yo, like, so I said, let me, let, me, let me do another challenge. I did another challenge. Like, nah, I did three challenges. And I said, Ash, you are bugging. Like, he is the answer. Uh, and so I made the investment. Um, the investment uh, is a five-figure investment, right? I got a scholarship, so it's usually a six-figure investment. But I made a five-figure investment, um, which literally cha has changed. Like I already got my money back, so it ain't even it ain't even one of those things where I made the investment and I'm like, yo, I better. I already made my money back, right? Um, and, and and I'm at a space now where um, you know the most I've made in a month has been six figures. I'm watching people though make six figures in a day, right? Uh, and in fact, just just for tr full transparency, at the time of this recording. I may be at my six figure day. I just, you know, I'm 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 in a, a process of gathering numbers. So so we I could be there already. Eventually, though, the 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 goal is to have a seven figure day. And I wanna say unequivocally, you you've allowed me to borrow your confidence mm -hmm. because I see myself in you, um, and you wear you unapologetically, um, and so, I, so I, I just want to say that. And so, for the, for those who don't know mm -hmm. who the Myron Golden is, talk to our insiders, man. Who is Myron Golden? So, I am an entrepreneur. I'm an author. I teach people financial literacy, and I teach business owners how to scale their business in four moves. Right. And the principles that I teach, we and, and I was just sharing with you before the show started. Last year in, in 2021, we probably had. Uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 people have earned a million dollar day award where they generated over a million dollars in revenue in a day. And we gave away um, somewhere between 30 and 40 hundred thousand dollar day awards, 100K day awards in 2021. Um, and so what I do is I teach people how to scale their business in four moves, but all of the principles that I teach in business, they're all based on biblical principles. It all comes from the Bible. In fact, um, people say, well, Myron, like, what's your favorite book? The Bible. What's your favorite book in the Bible? Uh, Genesis. What's your favorite chapter in Genesis? Genesis chapter one. And, and it's, when I'm reading Genesis chapter one, I'm going to write a book on it because there are so many success principles in Genesis chapter one. It's almost like God gave us a wink and said, well, in case you don't get to chapter two, I want you to be okay. Yeah. Like literally. Yeah. And some of the best principles for changing my life that I've ever found, I found in Genesis chapter one. So I just teach the stuff that I learned from the Bible. Yeah. And I don't teach it from a, um, from a, uh, religious perspective. I don't teach it from a what I call churchianity perspective. I teach it from a practical perspective because the Bible is a book of patterns, it's a book of promises, it's a book of principles, it's a book of precepts, and that that gives us the ability to make predictions about outcomes in the future. So we know, I know what's going to happen. You said like I, you borrowed my confidence. Well, the word co confidence comes from the root word confide. Oh. Confide means to trust, oh. right? So I trust the principles in the Bible to produce the outcome they promise. Oh. And so I don't have I don't have to do something where well I hope this works I already know it's going to work before I start doing it. Uh, uh -huh. So that's that's a little bit about who I am. Yeah, and no, I love that. And, and and so so talk to us a little bit about like the qualities, right? Because um, uh, the qualities that it takes for somebody to be successful. Because I feel like um, there's somebody watching right now sure. that is at that space that they they probably can't even receive that they could make. A million dollars in a day, or even a hundred thousand dollars in a month. So let's first let's first define successful. Yeah. Right. Let's define what success actually is instead of what most people think it is. Mm. I don't think success can be measured by an amount of money. Mm. Okay. I think success is measured by whether or not you fulfill the purpose for which you were created. Mm. Right. So I believe that success is discovering the purpose for which I was created, developing myself to fulfill that purpose, and then deploying myself out into the world to fulfill that purpose by serving other people. Oh. That is my definition. I don't believe that's my definition of success. That's the definition of success I understand from scripture, right? Yeah. Now, if I do that, I'm going to make some money, Yeah. right? Money is not some evil thing that Satan came up with. Uh -huh. Money is some, like money is a good idea because money is a God idea. Uh -huh. Wealth is a good idea because wealth is a God idea. Uh -huh. The physical substance that historically around the world for all of history has represented wealth is gold, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. And it's really interesting that 
there's a principle for, for understanding how to interpret things in the Bible called, there's the law of definitions, the law of context, and the law of first mention. Well, the law of first mention states, however God mentions something the first time in scripture, that's his original design for that thing. So I'm thinking about that one day, and I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder how many times gold is mentioned in the book of Genesis. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's gotta be in there 500 times. I'm gonna go look it up, it's not in there 500 times. It's in there exactly eight times. Now that's kind of mind blowing, but here's what's even more mind blowing. The first time it's mentioned, it's in the Garden of Eden. There are two people in the Garden of Eden. There's nothing for sale, nothing to buy. There are two people, they're married to each other, but there's gold there. And God tells us that it's there, but he doesn't just tell us there. He tells us it's there, he tells us it's good. So the people who have this internal conflict around money because they think something is inherently wrong with making money, that is a, what I call a doctrine of demons. It's a satanic belief because Satan is the God of lack and God is the God of abundance. Now, I'm not saying that God wants everybody to be rich. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but I am saying it's not his design for his people to be poor. Um, in fact, God created wealth and put it on the earth for his people. So here's what's, here's what's amazing. People want to have success. You see, people, people, people want to have success, but what they should desire is they should desire to be successful. Mm. And there's a difference because a lot of people don't realize that God gave us a success, for, a success formula in Genesis chapter 1. Here's, here's a success formula. It's really easy. Three words, all one syllable. You ready? Yeah, yeah I'm ready for it. Be, yep. do, mm -hmm. have. Mm. Here's what that means. Don't be, can't do. Can't do, can't have. Mm. Be a little, mm -hmm. do a little. Do a little, have a little. Mm. Be a lot, mm. do a lot. Do a lot, have a lot. Now, here's what's really interesting about that whole formula. Because it, it literally is a formula. Yeah. People think the way to change an output. So a result is an output, right? So if I do exercise, the output is going to be I'm going to be stronger. If I eat right, the exercise is going to be healthier, right? If I drink a lot of water, the output, the result of that is I'm going to be hydrated, right? So people attempt to change outputs by trying harder. I submit to you the number one reason people who are watching this podcast right now are struggling and working really hard, but what they're working at is not working for them. Uh -huh is because they're working on having the result instead of working on being the impetus of that result. So, yeah. so being is the input for doing, uh -huh. so doing is the output. Uh -huh. But doing is the input for having, and having is the output. Uh -huh. So if, here's, here's, here's the reality. Being is the input for doing, doing is the output. Doing is the output for having, so having is the output. So here's what's really interesting. If you wanna change an output, don't try harder at what's not working. Mm. That's why working hard is not necessarily the formula for success. Because yeah. if you're working hard at what's not working, that doesn't guarantee you success. That just guarantees you that, just guarantees you that you're going to be more tired. Mm. Right? So if you want to change the output, change the input, and the output changes automatically. Mm. Every single solitary time. Mm -hmm. so, th so the thing that we have to focus on is we have to focus on becoming the person who can do the thing. And then and only then, well, we have the stuff. Mm. Full transparency is gonna be a hard interview to go, right? Because like, as you're talking, like you've just blown my mind constantly, right? You've just blown my mind. Um, and I love how, you know, again, the be, do, have. Um, how did you get to this space? Like, how did you get to this space of understanding um, that you can tie uh, the Bible to business principles and how did you apply that uh, into you know your success so, now. So I didn't really have to tie it to it because it's in there. Yeah. So so if for instance if I wanted to show you how to play better golf based on biblical principles, then I'd have to tie it mm. right because the Bible doesn't talk about golf. Mm. It doesn't talk about tennis. It doesn't talk about race car driving. Mm. But the Bible talks about business over and over and over and over and over again. Mm. I mean the Bible is a book that talks about highlights business. A dream coming through a multitude of business. That's in the Old Testament. Somebody says, well, give me a New Testament principle for business. Uh, first, uh, first Thessalonians chapter four. Uh, verse number 11 and 12, it says, and that you study to be quiet and to do your own business. Doing what? Working with your hands as we commanded you. Why? That you may walk honestly toward them that are without, that talk about paying your bills on time, and that ye may have lack of nothing. God's plan for you to have lack of nothing is for you to have your own business. I, like, I didn't put that in the Bible. It was in there when I got up. So, so I, I just happened to notice it in there. I'm like, how come nobody's talking about this? Right. right? And so, interestingly enough, interestingly enough, I think, I think that like first things, like if I introduce myself to you and I say, hey man, I'm Myron Golden, I'm the author of XYZ, the most, like let's say I'm the author of Boss Moves, for instance, right? So the most important thing that I want you to know about me mm. is that I'm the author of Boss Moves, because that's the thing I told you first. Yeah. Well, you know what's really interesting about God? The first thing he told us about himself. Mm. 
It's not that he's good, it's not that he's love, it's not that he's holy, it's not that he's just. The first thing God tells us about God is in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So the first thing that God tells about God is that he's creative. Mm. Now listen, you wanna get into real estate without dealing with the hassle of tenants, toilets, or trash? You wanna get into the number one performing asset which is self-storage facilities. Think about the demand. Right now, so many people are going through tough times through this pandemic. A lot of people are downsizing, they're losing their jobs, but they wanna hold on to their most sacred possessions. What do we do with it? You put it in a storage facility, just like this one right here. But how about you get into the number one performing asset without any of those problems? No tenants, no trash, no toilets, high demand. Listen, I got this fire training, right? So I need you to join my free training, my commercial real estate masterclass, where I'm gonna show you how to go out there and purchase yourself storage facilities with no money out of your pocket, right? So if you at the bottom right now, you thinking I can't get started because I don't have money, I have an opportunity for you. So if you wanna learn while you earn, tap into my free training, you're gonna get life changing information to go out there and start your journey. Take advantage of the opportunity just like that. I'll see you on the other side. It's not that being creative is the most important thing, attribute of God, but it's one of the most important things we have to understand about God. Why? Because the first thing God tells about God is that he's creative. The first thing God tells about us is that he created us in his image, which means he created us to create stuff and he made us to make stuff. So what's the purpose for my life now that I understand why I'm here? To live in my creative space and make the world a better place. That's why I'm here. Mm. And your creative space is different than mine, and mine's different than yours, yeah. and yours is different from the next person. And every, we all have a different creative space, so I don't have to be jealous of yours mm -hmm. or envious of yours. You don't have to be envious of mine. We can all celebrate each other's greatness because each of us has a different aspect of God's creativity inside of us. Mm. You know, I said earlier um, that people could exponentially grow their business by 1,280% and four moves. Talk to us about that. Okay, so, so if you think about what does it mean to have a business? It means that you sell a product or a service for profit, mm -hmm. right? Not just you sell it for money, because if you sell it for money and you're selling it for less money than it costs you to make it or it costs you to create it, then you're not, you don't have a business, right? So you sell, a biz, you sell a product or a service for profit. Like your purpose is to sell a product, gather the profit for yourself or parts of the profit to keep for yourself. That's the purpose of having a business, right? Okay, so the problem is there are only four ways to grow a business. That's why I say four moves, right? There, there are three functions of business. A business has three functions. Innovation, that means you create something that the marketplace is screaming for or the marketplace desperately needs. You find a hole in the marketplace and you fill that hole with something that the marketplace is gonna love. That's innovation. Then you have marketing. Marketing is the art and science of discovering and developing in other people a desire for more and more of your product, your service, or your opportunity. That's marketing. And then you have money management. Money management is managing the money so the outgo doesn't exceed the income, so the upkeep does not become the downfall of the business. Those are the three functions. But there are four ways to grow a business. And here they are. Here are the four moves. Lead generation. So a person needs to learn how to create great lead generation offers. Prospecting is a waste of time. I don't care if you sell insurance. I don't care if you sell cars. Doesn't matter if you sell insurance, cars, vitamins, houses. Prospecting is a waste of time. Do you know why? Because prospecting is you trying to find people to sell stuff to. You say, Myron, how do I find people to sell my stuff to? And I always say, do you want me to answer that question or do you want me to answer the question you should have asked? Because the question you should have asked is not how do I find people to sell my stuff to. The question you should have asked is how do I make myself findable for people who already want to buy what I already have to sell. Mm. And so if I can make myself more findable for the people who already want to buy, there's stuff you already want to buy right now, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as soon as you find it, you're going to buy it. There's stuff I want to buy right now. As soon as I find it, I'm going to buy it. So nobody has to find me and talk me into buying it, mm -hmm. right? So how do I make myself more findable for people who already want to buy what I want to sell? I'm going to tell you something that will change your life, Ash. Mm -hmm. There are right now thousands, probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions of people in the world right now mm -hmm. who would happily pay you whatever you charge mm -hmm. for the transformation you create for them. Mm -hmm. They just don't know you exist. Yeah. So the question then is, how do I make myself findable for those people, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so that's number one, lead generation. You need to create lead generation offers, better lead generation offers and more lead generation offers. That's number one. Number two, core product offers. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put this all in a formula to show you how to scale business um, 100, 1,280%, that's, I'll show you how to do that, okay, in a minute. Mm -hmm. so, so core product offers, those, so that's the main thing that you sell. Here's the problem with most businesses. They, only, they think that the only thing they sell is the main thing they sell, mm -hmm. 
but the main thing you sell is only one of the things you should be selling oh. because every solution that we create for the marketplace creates 10 new problems. I've got my iPhone right here in my pocket, right? So I bought my iPhone, what did I need? I immediately, before I left the, before I left the Verizon store, when I bought my iPhone, I had to buy a screen protector. Oh. Because if I drop my phone, I don't want the screen to break. I want the screen protector to break. I had to buy a phone cover. I had to buy a pop sock. So now I got all this stuff on the outside of my phone, not to mention the apps and the eBooks and all the stuff I bought for the inside of my phone. So this solution created a whole world, a whole universe of new problems that had to be solved. So if I create the iPhone, it would behoove me to be the one that creates the screen, the related products, and the phone, co the phone cover, or the phone protector and the pop socket, and whatever, and the apps. The more of the, the, the ecosystem for my invention that I sell, that I sell to people, the more of that money I'm keeping in my ecosystem, my economic ecosystem. So that's number one, so core products. So what you have to do is you have to figure out like, okay, I'm selling these core products, but what else are my clients buying for more money, but they're buying it from somebody else, okay? Which brings us to the next one, premium value offers. So what's a premium value offer? That's an offer that your clients, the clients you have right now, they're buying it, they just ain't buying it from you because yes, you don't have it, yeah. right? And then the last one is continuity offers. So you take those four offers, you can scale a business from 10,000 a month to 128,000 a month in those four moves, and we've had people do that inside two months. Yeah. Go from 10,000 a month to over 100,000 a month in two months. I know that sounds, no, it doesn't, okay, but think about it. So I'm gonna give you the scenario, and for those of you who are writing stuff down, you can write it down on your piece of paper, you can check my math, get your calculator out, okay? But this is, this is literally what I teach people to do, and now you're gonna be like, okay, well, that's what, that's what I need to do. So if you are generating, like let's say you have a $1,000 core product offer, you sell it for 1000 bucks. let's say you're generating 100 leads a month, you're converting 10% of those sales, right? So a $1,000 core product, 100 leads a month, 10% conversion, 10% of 100 is 10 times a thousand dollar core product offer, ten thousand dollars a month. You're making ten thousand a month with a hundred leads, ten percent conversion, right? So, if I want to double that, if I come to you and I say, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do, Ash. We're going to double your lead generation. If everything else in your business stays the same, your revenue has to double, double yeah, right? Exactly. So, if we just take you from generating um, one hundred leads a month to generating two hundred leads a month, I've just changed your business. I've just increased your revenue by a hundred percent. Okay. That's pretty cool, but is it great? Well, it's gonna be great in a minute because I'm gonna tell you, if you want me to, I'll share with your people, like without them having to pay me, I'll share with you the number one secret sauce to generating twice as many leads with the same ads. Talk to me, talk we'll to me, talk to we'll us. The the insiders, look, right. insider secrets. Yeah, this is insider secret. So, and, and, and what's fascinating to me is almost nobody knows this. I'm like, how can you not know this? Mm -hmm. So the number one thing that will change your lead generation the most and make your ad cost twice as effective right, which means your ads are effectively half as much, right, is when you create an opt-in page, like, hey, put in your name and email address and phone number and I'll send you a free copy of my ebook or whatever, right? Instead of making that, that ethical bribe, that opt-in thing, that, that free thing you're giving away, instead of using it to lead people towards pleasure, mm. use it to lead them away from pain, you'll double your opt-ins. Mm. What do I mean? So. I teach people how to make money. Yeah. So, so let's say I say, okay, to go get my special special report, seven steps to seven figures, put in your name and email address, I'm gonna send it to you. Mm -hmm. You know what's gonna happen? People are gonna read that, they're gonna say, there's no seven steps to seven figures. Oh, yeah. And so they're gonna be skeptical, they're not gonna do it. They're gonna be negative, they're gonna be skeptical, they're not gonna believe me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because people don't trust strangers to lead them into pleasure, mm. right? Mm -hmm. If I'm standing out on a street corner in, Her in um, Tampa, Florida, and I say, I'm standing on a street corner, like on Boy Scout Boulevard, and, and, um, and whatever that other road is, Cyprus or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm $300 bills, $300 bills. Who wants one, right? $300 bills. Hey. People are gonna say, I'll take one, I'll take right. one. Gonna, People are gonna like, yeah, like yeah, what's yeah. wrong with that, brother? Right. Nobody's giving away $300 bills. Why? Why? Because you don't, you don't trust a stranger uh -huh. to give away $300 bills. Nobody does that. Yeah. And I don't trust a stranger to give me seven steps to seven figures. Uh -huh. But let's say I'm, you're downtown same street corner, same guy giving away $300 bills. You step up to the curb, you trip, you fall, you hit your head on a stop sign post, blood's pouring down your face. The same person comes over, takes a handkerchief out of her pocket. Oh, oh, let me, here, here, put, here, put this on the bleeding. You don't even know what's on that rag, but you put right. it on your head, right? You say, oh, I don't have my phone. I don't have my phone. Um, let me see your phone. Um, um, I, I'll call 911. You give them your phone. I, what, so it's locked. What, you give them your passcode. Same stranger, right? right? 
And they call 911 for you. Why? Because we trust strangers to lead us out of pain, but we don't trust strangers to lead us into pleasure. Mm -hmm. So if you will just make your opt-ins away from pleasure, away from pain instead of towards pleasure, even though they're both going in the same direction, right. you'll generate twice as many leads. So that, that's like little just ah. free secrets off. And, and, and so and so that makes so much sense because you know I think that I mean me even specifically being from the north, right, from New York. Um, when, you know, I, when I moved to, to Georgia, when people would walk up to me and say hi, I'd be like, "Yo, like what you, you like what you what you what you want here?" Like you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, and so and so I, you know, that, that's that's a, that's a great concept. Um, and and I and I love the other thing that you said about there's people that want to buy from you that oh, don't yeah. they don't even know you they don't you exist. But, but but not even that. Like I like I literally I literally. Um, had a young lady that was in my coaching program and I did not have a high ticket offer at this time. And so I literally helped her, like I gave her the, I gave her a brand name. Um, I Like I did everything that I promised that I was going to do. And then I remember she called me uh, one day and she said, Ash, thank you so much. You've helped me scale my business to six figures. I am now going to go with X coach because they have a high level program that's going to help me scale to seven. And in my mind, you know, I was mad at first. I was mad. <laughs> I said, no, I could take you to seven. But I didn't, I didn't have the, the Right, you didn't have the offer. I didn't have and the so, offer. So, but see, if you think about it, like, okay, so let's, let's say a Rolls Royce, right? Yeah. So, um, like, a Rolls Royce might cost $330,000. Yeah. A Kia might cost three hundred. dollars Th th 33,000. Yeah. So does a Rolls Royce go 10 times faster than a Kia? No. Is the windshield, windshield 10 times clearer? No. No. Does the radio sound 10 times better? Mm -hmm. no. Stereo sounds 10 times yeah. No. Does it get you to your destination 10 times better? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. So how can they charge 10 times as much? Well, they can charge 10 times as much because they have a name. So watch this. If you, if you are the cheapest, no one will believe you are the best. Mm. And if you are the best, nobody expects you to be the cheapest. Nobody expects to be able to pay $33,000 for a new Rolls Royce. Mm. Mm. Man. And ooh, that's, a, that's a mind blow. And so how, how, do, how do we get to that space, though, right? How do you get to this space? You're, you're an you know, entrepreneur because I think a lot of people um, either, um, you, know, you know, make their decisions based on either their history or what they see in front of them. And so if they don't have access to being able to have made that money before in the past and they don't believe it's true, right. or if all they're seeing is people struggling, people working hard, people grinding, yeah. right? Like how do, how, how do you get to that and So people come to most of, their, most of their conclusions based on analogy. Yeah. They look at what somebody else is doing and they think, well, that's what's possible for me. Or they look at what somebody else is doing and they say, that's not possible for me. Yeah. As opposed to operating from first principles. When you operate from first principles, First principles are one plus one equals two. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter if everybody else is walking around with a shirt on that says one plus one equals three, uh -huh. right? It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. You just go, well, this is the principle, so I'm gonna do this, uh -huh. right? And the Bible is the ultimate book in first principles. And so I don't even look at what other people do because uh -huh. it doesn't really, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Um, and so what my recommendation is, Instead, when you're, create, when you're con conceiving the value for your offer, whether you sell shoes, whether you sell um, T-shirts, whether you sell coaching, cars, real estate, whatever, when you're thinking about how much should I sell this for, instead of looking at what everybody else is doing, ask yourself this question. What's the payoff? Mm -hmm. what, like, what's the payoff that they get when they buy this thing from me? Mm -hmm. If the payoff is worth 100000 then the, the offer has to be worth at least ten. Mm -hmm. It's actually worth 100, but let's just say it's worth at least 10% of that, right? Yep, yep. So, so if, if I can help somebody, if I can help somebody make a million dollars, now there may be other people out there who will do this, uh -huh. help somebody make a million dollars and only charge them 3,000, uh -huh. I'm not that guy. Right, right, I'm not that right, guy, right? right. Uh, if I'm going to help you make a million dollars, that's got to be worth at least 100 grand, yeah. right? Yeah. And so look at the payoff. Don't make the value of your offer, the pieces, how, how many workbooks they get, how many videos, how many whatever. Mm -hmm. Don't make the, um, don't, please don't make the value of your offer, your process. Mm -hmm. If you show somebody your process, all you're doing is showing them how hard it is. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to do it, mm -hmm. okay? Don't make it your person mm -hmm. because then you're going to be the most sought after person. You might be making a lot of money, but you won't have any time. Mm -hmm. Right, so when you sell a coaching program, for instance, don't make it wrapped up in your time. They don't want your time. What right. they want is their time. Right. Like, would you rather pay me a hundred thousand dollars to get 
um, four hours of my time or would you rather pay me $100,000 to buy back the rest of your life? Right? Oh, man, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, 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 what, so when we look at the four moves and we look at how all of that fits into what we're talking about, the first move is lead generation. You double the lead generation, you doubled your revenue. But watch what happens next. You double the core product conversions. Double your conversions by getting better at sales. Mm. Right? And most people don't understand sales. Most people think selling is talking people into buying something they don't want, don't need, and can't afford. Mm. That's not what selling is. Selling is uncovering the value of what you have to offer so well that people are happy to exchange the money they have in their pocket for the value you revealed. Mm. So when you really get good at selling, what you're doing is you're helping people see what it would feel like mm. when they have the result of using your particular offer. Mm. That's really what selling is, right? You help them see what it's gonna feel like mm. before they ever feel it. You help them see what it's gonna feel like. So watch what happens. So you, if you can just double your conversions to 20%, if you get halfway decent at sales, I don't care what you sell, you can get to a 20% conversion rate, mm -hmm. right? So you're generating 200 leads a month, you have a thousand dollar offer, you're converting at 20% instead of 10%, 20% times 200 leads, that's 40 sales. Uh -huh. Times 1,000, that's 40,000 a month. Uh -huh. Oh, snap. Let's go. Let's go, right? I mean, yeah. 40,000, that's four times better than 10,000. Yeah. And we haven't even really got to the good stuff yet, uh -huh. right? We fixed two things. We quadrupled our revenue. Let's, let's take it one more time. Ready? We add a premium value offer. What is a premium value offer? It's, it's my version of Rolls Royce. Uh -huh. You know who sells Maybach, right? Maybach, right? Mercedes. Mercedes. Yeah. Why did Mercedes create a $300,000, $400,000 car because they got tired of sending their best customers to Rolls Royce and Bentley because they didn't have anything to sell them, right? See, a lot of people think, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to charge people that much. I don't want them to have to pay that much. You are not, when you don't have a premium value offer, you're not keeping people from spending premium money on an offer. You're just keeping them from spending it with you, yeah. right? Because they're going to go spend it with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Just like you said, that person who you helped, right. they went to somebody else, took most of their money to somebody else after you helped them get to six right. figures. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, so you add a premium value offer. That premium value offer might be 5000 might be 10000 might be 50000 might be 25000 whatever the, re it's based on the result you can get people, right? Let's say you have, you, you create a $10,000 premium value offer. Let's say 10% of the conversions, that's 10% of the people who bought your core product offer, buy your premium value offer. So you're making 40 sales a month, but now you're converting 10% of those. That's four people on your $10,000 offer. That's another 40,000 a month. Yeah, yeah. Now you're at 80,000 a month. You're almost at a million dollars a year, mm. and you've only fixed three things. Mm. Oh, this is getting juicy, mm. right? This, and by the way, this is exactly the process we take people through. Yeah. This is what I do in my own business. Yeah. I look at where my business is. I get a profit and loss statement every single week from my account. And I say, okay, this is what we need to change. This is the next thing we need to do. This is the next level we need to move, right? Okay, so the last one is you add a continuity offer. And that is something you sell once, but people pay you for it over and over again. So let's say a continuity program can be software, it can be a newsletter, it could be a membership site, and let's say they pay you $100 a month. And let's say you sell that continuity as an FCO. So an FCO is a forced continuity offer, which means when they buy your core product offer for $1,000, you give them your software, your newsletter, or your membership site for free for three months. And after that, they pay $100 a month. Mm. But they have to utilize the stuff in the core product offer, I mean, the, in the, in the, in the um, continuity offer, to get the most out of the core product offer. Mm -hmm. So now what happens, you're getting 40 people a month, mm -hmm. right, to take advantage of this continuity offer. 40 times 100, that's 4,000, times 12 months, that's 48,000 a month. You add that to the 80,000 a month, you're at $128,000 in four months. So in four moves, you took your business from 100,000 a month to 128,000 a month in four moves. Wow. It's just math, it's wow. just math. Wow. And, and then there's some psychology involved. But if you understand that that's like, we, the reason business is hard is because we haven't learned to do it, mm. right? Yeah. Anything is hard if you don't know how to do it. Mm. But once you learn, it's almost like there's, it's almost like there's this inside track Right, that some people know about it, and everybody else is just like doing it the hard way. Yeah. Right, and it's so fascinating when you watch people work. Like, why are you doing it that way? Yeah. That's yeah. so grueling. Yeah. And so you just show them a couple of levers to move. Yeah. And it changes the game. And so let me ask you something, right? So, so, so these four moves. Somebody's listening right now. Mm -hmm. Might might think like, man, I, yo, I gotta get back on the grind. I'm not like 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 I'm not hustling hard enough. What's your thoughts about? The hustle and the grind. So, so hustling. So, here's what I'm gonna say. Yeah. 
Working hard doesn't necessarily make you more deserving of success. It does make you more tired. Uh -huh. And it can make you a better person. I believe if you're going to work on something, you should work hard at it instead of being slothful, right? Yeah. But I don't believe hard work is the key to success. Yeah. I believe the key to success is to work the principles, mm -hmm. right? I, I call principles God's automation. So if you work the principles, the principles work for you. If you work with principles, principles work for you. Mm -hmm. If you work against principles, principles work against you. That is a war you can't win, yeah. right? And so, so my recommendation, instead of working hard at what's not working, mm -hmm. work hard to figure out what would work better and then work on that, mm. right? Yeah. So what does the tree have to do to, and you've heard me ask this before, mm. and I'll ask, what does the tree have to do to grow apples? People say it has to be planted in the ground, it has to be watered, it has to be fertilized. But the most important thing it has to do is be an apple tree, yeah. right? I live in Florida, I've never seen an orange grow in an apple tree, mm. why? Because the fruit of anything mm. has to match the root mm. of that thing. Mm. And see what happens is, people are trying to produce a fruit for which they have no root. Mm. Right, and so all you got to do is you want to change. You want to change the fruit. Change the root. Mm. Right. Don't don't keep the root the same and then paint the fruit, or keep the root the same and hate the fruit. Right. 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 It, it's the root. Right. Interestingly enough, first thing God tells us about God, right? He's creative. First thing God tells us about us, He created us in His image. The first thing that God ever said to man, when He talked to a human being, the first thing you say to somebody is pretty important mm. when you meet somebody, right? God, first thing God ever says to man, be fruitful. Mm. What is fruit? What is fruit? What does it mean to be fruitful? Mm. A fruit is a living organism whose seed is in itself. Mm. It means produce on the outside based on what God put on the inside. Mm -hmm. That's my number one objective, to yeah. be fruitful, right? Then he said, do multiply. Mm. Multiply means to increase. So I'm supposed to use the fruitfulness that's inside of me to produce on the outside what God put on the inside, and I'm supposed to increase based on that seed mm. that he put in me, mm. right? Then he says, and do replenish. Replenish means to fill up. So increase and fill up the earth with what you increase. Mm. And then he said, and subdue. Mm -hmm. What's subdue mean? It means to trample down. Mm -hmm. Why does he tell me to trample something down? That doesn't even make any sense. Because God understands something we haven't figured out yet. And that is this. This is a principle. This is a pattern you will see it everywhere in life. You ready? Mm -hmm. Disruption always follows intention. Mm. We, there's no place in life where you start a new good habit and initially something good happens. Mm. You start a new good habit and, habit and initially something bad happens. Mm. Something doesn't feel good. You start working out, you don't feel stronger, you feel weaker. Right. Muscles hurt, muscles ache. You start eating right, you don't feel better, you don't feel stronger. You have start having detox. You, you might even have diarrhea. You might feel nauseous for days, mm. right? If you, when you do something good for the first time initially, intention is always followed by disruption, mm. right? Yeah. So, so he says, trample it down. Stomp. He, oh, God says, produce on the outside based on what I put on the inside. Increase. Fill up the earth with the increase and stomp everything that tries to stop you. Mm. Stomp it. Stress. And then, <laughs> and then it says, are you ready? Yeah. And then it says, and have dominion. Mm. So be, do, have. Now, if we understand that the platform that was created in Genesis 1-1 was time, space, and matter. In the beginning, there's time. Mm -hmm. God created the heavens, there's space, and the earth, there's matter. That's the platform, right? Well, if you look at the parameters, which are be, do, have, mm -hmm. the purpose of time is for, the, is for being. The reason time exists is so we can become more than we are. Mm -hmm. All right, my granddaughter's almost three years old. We don't throw her the keys and say, run to Publix and bring back a loaf of bread. Why? Mm -hmm. Not that she will never be able to do that. She's just not yet become the person who mm -hmm. can do that. Right. We have to give her time to grow into the person who can go to Publix and bring back a loaf of bread, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So time, the purpose of time is to become, the reason we've all been given time, we've all been given time is to become more than we've been being, mm. right? The purpose of space is doing. The reason we've been given space is so we can do something. If you don't have space, you can't do anything. If I'm all wrapped up in cellophane and tra taped up with duct tape, I can't do anything. Right. I don't have any space around me, right. right? So the purpose of time is being. Mm. The purpose of space is doing. The purpose of matter is having. Mm. Yeah. So the reason stuff exists is so I can have it. Now here's what's really interesting. God put inside of me a desire to have nice stuff. I have a desire for a nice house, nice clothes, nice experiences, nice, nice relationships, nice vacations. That is God-given. People think there's something wrong with it, but that's natu it's natural. Mm -hmm. Why did God put inside of us a desire for nice things? Because nice experiences of life. Mm -hmm. Because that is the carrot on the stick. Mm -hmm. God put, gave us a desire to have more, so we'd yield to be willing to do more in order to have it. Mm -hmm. And we would bump our head and stub our toe on our inability to do it. Mm -hmm. So we'd finally yield to the thing that God cares about most, and that is us becoming the person wow. who is more like him so we can do what he put us here to do. Wow. Wow. Oh, that's heavy, heavy, heavy. And so uh, do you believe that uh, any business could become a, a million-dollar business? Yeah, a million. 
Yeah, a million dollar business. I mean, that's a, a million dollar. It's a million dollar business sounds like a lot until you get there. Yeah, right. 100%. Right. 100%. <laughs> then you get there like, why did I wait so long to do this? 100%. Right. Right. I, I rem it, like I was an entrepreneur. I I was an entrepreneur for fourteen years before I had my first six figure year because I didn't understand the stuff I'm talking about. Uh -huh. Nobody was telling me this. Yeah. Right. I was an entrepreneur for fourteen years before I had my first six figure year, uh -huh. and then within four years I had my first seven figure year. Uh -huh. But now I'm like. I, as I look back on it, like, why did it take me so long? Right. I, and I, I've shared this before, not because I'm some great one, but I just understand how it works now. Yeah. I've generated $3.8 million in 27 minutes. Sheesh. $3,852,000 in 27 minutes in sales. Now, so, but there, and that's, how, that's a lot, yeah. but there are people who make money faster than that. Yeah. In fact, there's a Forbes magazine from 2007 that I have. And, and there was one of the articles in it, Speed to Wealth. Mm -hmm. How long does it take a billionaire to make $1,000? Mm -hmm. And like, Oprah, it takes eight seconds. And this person, it takes 27 seconds. This person takes three minutes. And it's just fascinating to see that wealthy people understand something that poor people don't understand. Mm -hmm. And that is this, time is more valuable than money. Mm -hmm. Rich people value time more than we value money. Poor people value money more than they value time. Mm -hmm. And that's why mm -hmm. people who go around saying, time is money, time is money. I already know they're broke. Somebody says time is money, they're either broke or they're confused or they're just a liar. The, yeah. Those are the only three options, yeah. right? And so why do I say that? Well, because if I said to you, I'll write you a million dollar check right now that will clear the bank. Uh -huh. I'll write you a million dollar check right now. Would you like it? Uh -huh. Would you like that? Yeah, well, of course absolutely. you would. Yeah, well, so, yeah. But if I said, there's one caveat, I'm gonna write you this million dollar check right now, but you have to end your life as soon as I give it to you. Now, uh -huh. do you want it? Absolutely not. Why? Because you already realize it instinctively and intuitively that you're, the time you have left, uh -huh is more valuable than a million dollar check, 100%. right? Cool. So you understand already, but if you, don't, if you don't ever consciously think about it, you go through life thinking time is money, time is money, time is money, two things you're gonna do that are gonna really mess up your life, and here they are. You're gonna sell a whole bunch of your time for a little bit of somebody else's money, uh -huh. and you're gonna waste a whole lot of time trying to save a little bit of money. Uh, wow. wow. But when you understand that time is more valuable than money, you will do what it says in the Bible, who knew? This is a Bible principle, right? Mm -hmm. We will spend as much money as necessary to buy back the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. Because here's what it says in Ephesians. It says, Redeem, walk, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. What does redeem mean? It means to buy back, mm -hmm. to buy up, to rescue from loss, and to improve opportunity. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the days are evil. It's not talking about evil like the devil is evil. The word evil there means difficult in nature. So the scripture tells me, Buy back your time, rescue it from loss, improve your opportunity. Why? Because life is hard. Mm -hmm. So when I understand that time's more valuable than money, now I spend as much money as necessary to buy back the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so what? Oof, heavy stuff, man. And so, what would your advice be to somebody watching now? That like, what's the, what's the first thing they need to do? Right there, they're trying like to the ultimate shortcut. Yeah, ultimate shortcut. Ultimate shortcut. Find somebody who has the results you'd like to produce, pay uh -huh. them whatever they charge, and do everything they say, and trust their, what they know more than you trust what you know. Because uh -huh. I'm going to tell you something. A good coach, 90% of it, what a good coach tells you to do when you first get a good coach, 90% of it is going to be counterintuitive to you. Uh -huh. It's going to be like, nah, that can't be that, can't be that. Like, but think about it. If it made sense to you, you'd already be doing it. Facts, 100%. You'd already be doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You say it took you 14 years. Yeah. Right? To, to have my first six figure year. Six figure year. Uh, if By the way, don't take that, that long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was going to say, right? It, it, like, if you could do it all over, oh, yeah. what, 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 what would you do different? Uh, well, I would have done it faster. And the way I would have done it faster is I would have found somebody who had the results I wanted, mm -hmm. and I would have paid them whatever they charge, yeah. and I would do everything they say. Yeah. It's so interesting. Like, I became an entrepreneur in 1985, right? Mm -hmm. October of 1985. And as hard as this is going to be for you to believe, Ash, it's, it is the truth. Yeah. I was horrible at sales. Mm -hmm. I was horrible. I got started October of 1985 selling financial services, insurance, and investments. I didn't make my first sale until April of 1987, wow. 18 months later. And I was doing presentation. Yeah. Presentation after friends. Friends, family, no, 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 no. Hey, bro, no. Yo, bro, no. Uh -huh. And oh, it's a two-letter word. What part you're having a hard time? <laughs> right. An N or the O, right? Right, right? And everybody was telling me no, but I didn't understand how to sell. Yeah. Sell. I was, I was terrible at it. Yeah. But you know what I did? I did something that most people are unwilling to do. I lasted through the learning curve. I was willing to be bad at it long enough to get good at it. Wow, that's a bar. Yeah. Right? And so most people aren't willing to do that. They're, they try something three times or for six months and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You scammed me, right? But here's the problem. If you're grown and broke, I got here too late to scam you. <laughs> here's, broke, 
Grown plus broke equals already been scammed. Okay, sorry. <laughs> if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, or small business owner who wants to get more visibility for your product or service, then consider advertising on Inside the Vault. We have been seen and heard over 2 million times, and as the show continues to grow, your ad would be embedded in our episodes forever. So the return on investments on advertising with us is unmeasurable and invaluable. If you're interested in this once in a lifetime opportunity, then text podcast to 646-687-4152 or email us at info at inside the vault show.com. Allow your business to get the visibility that it deserves. And so, and so, and so, you know, you know, talk, talk to us because, because, uh, you know, one of the things, like I, like I told the audience earlier, uh, one of the things that um, made me a believer um, was your challenge, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I've got, I've gotten more, not more, but I've gotten a lot out of it just joining the challenge. Yeah, the five day challenge. Yeah, talk, talk about the, the, so, the five day challenge. So, so it's so fascinating. So, um, how the whole concept of the because my challenge is called the Make More Offers Challenge, right? Yeah. So, um, I have this I had this I have this coaching program that's now one hundred fifty five thousand yeah. dollars. It used to be forty thousand dollars back in the day. Yeah. There's this lady who wanted to buy it. She's a homeschool mom. Her husband was an Uber driver. People think like, I can't believe you take advantage of somebody like that. Okay, whatever. So, so I told her about the program. It's based on King Solomon's business model. I'm going to show you the business model of King Solomon. I'm going to teach you how to implement that business model. She said, okay, I want to buy it. I said, okay, it's $2,000 non-refundable deposit. She gave me $2,000. I'm going to go home. I'm going to get a loan, blah, blah, blah. She couldn't qualify for the loan. Uh -huh. She couldn't get the money. She tried to get money from her family members. She couldn't get it. She thought she was going to be able to get out of her trust. Could get out of the trust. She calls me on the phone like a month later, Myron, I really want to work with you, but I don't have the money. And I tried to get it from here and it didn't work. I thought I was going to be able to get it from there and it didn't work. I tried to get it from here and it didn't work. Tell me, what do I do? I really want to work with you. I literally took my phone away from my head and said, who is this person that is this brutally honest, right? Yeah. Like, I don't have the money, but I want to do the thing. Uh -huh. I said, okay, I'm going to tell you what to do. She said, I said, here's what you do. You already have an offer. I get that it's not selling. She had an offer that she was trying to sell for $4,000. People weren't buying it. So you take that offer and you raise the price to $6,000. Uh -huh. I know when people think something's not selling, you don't raise the price. No, you raise the price. Uh -huh. Okay, so I said, you raise the price to $6,000. You let them know, okay, Anybody who wants to get this for $4,000, you better get it before the end of this month because the end of this month is $6,000. Uh -huh. And so if you've been on the fence, you've been thinking about it, like the price is going up, you better like step up to the plate and quit tripping, right? And so, and I told her, if you will do that, and I said, then take the number of offers you usually do every year, do that number of offers every month. Take the number of offers you usually do every month, do that number of offers every day. I mean, every week. Take the number of offers you do every week, do that number of offers every day, do the number of offers you do every day, do that number of offers every hour while you're working. If you will do that, in 30 days, you'll have the money. She needed $18,000. She's going to pay $20,000 down and then pay the other $20,000 on payments, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. She called me in six days and said, Myron, I have the money. Where do you want wow. me to send it? Yeah. That same woman now is the first woman in our coaching program to have a million dollar day, right? So we came up with the idea from the Make More Offers Challenge from the advice I gave this woman, Eileen. Uh -huh. You got to make more offers. Uh -huh. Make more offers. So we teach people in the five-day challenge how to make more lead generation offers, more and better lead generation offers, make more and better core product offers, make more and better premium value offers, make more and better continuity offers. Mm -hmm. And then we tie it all together and show them how to put the whole thing together and then we give them the outline for a coaching program on the fifth day mm -hmm. so they can go like create their own coaching program, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. that's that's what we do on the Make More Offers Challenge. Um, the success stories that are coming out of that thing are Ridiculous. just insane. 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 I mean, just, I mean, just it's crazy, crazy. Yeah, and 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 that's the that's one of the things I would say to anybody who's on the fence, right? Is get around people who are successful, sure. right? Because you know I was saying earlier that for me, what 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 you know how my life has changed already was proximity. To be one hundred percent honest, because when I was the best in my circle, the top of the you know I'm, I'm the I'm the top of the bottom, right? And and no disrespect to any circles I've been in, but when I'm the best then that means it's it's time to get to other circles. And when mm -hmm. I'm going into circles, um, you know, and that's the that's the other thing too, is you'll realize the 
like success wants other success. Oh, for sure. Right? Because like I'm in circles now that people aren't afraid. Like no one looks at each other as competition. Exactly. No one's afraid to exactly. give the plays because they want other people to be successful. 100%. They're not like, yo, I'm, I want to be the only one. They're like, nah, yo, let me give you this little sauce. You're doing it this way. Yo, yo, here's this little sauce that's going to help you do it. Um, and, and you've created an environment. Like, I, honestly, I would tell somebody... Skip the challenge. Just go if you can afford. If you can afford, I mean, you can afford. But if you can afford the, if you know you can, if afford, you know you can afford, yeah, yeah, yeah right? if you know you can afford. It. If you know you can afford uh, the 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 mastermind, then then go for the high level mastermind because again, the value is it's actually undervalued. Don't, oh, oh, I right? know. It's actually oh, undervalued. Because, I am not confused. Yeah, you yeah. know, and and so and so you know what what qualities. Um, do you look for, or not even look for, but what so, qualities is, is... So a couple of things. So yeah. so our King Solomon's Wisdom Inner Circle is 155000 a year, but you we have a couple of grants, a couple of $50,000 grants for people with, if, who want to qualify for them. Everybody doesn't. Yeah. Some people just pay the 155000 and say, okay, I don't want the grants, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a reason for that, but which I won't go into right now. But there are a whole lot of people who wanted to be a part of that program and didn't have the money. Yeah. So I created the Make More Offers Challenge and Offer Mastery Bootcamp to help people make enough money mm -hmm. so they can afford to get into my higher level program. Yeah, yeah, no, that's awesome. And and and, and again, the, 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 and I've seen, I, like I've been one of the people that have done the challenge over and over and I've seen other people do the challenge over and over again. Um, and like you said, like that, this one thing that you do, sure. Which is make more offers can make you money. Yeah, it's, a game, it's a game changer. A game changer. The, I've coached thousands of entrepreneurs. The number one common denominator of entrepreneurs that struggle is they don't make enough offers. Yeah. And and people have different reasons for not making enough offers. Some people don't make enough offers because they think they're already making enough offers. Yeah. Some people don't make enough offers because they literally have anxiety about somebody telling them no to their offer, yeah. as if that makes their offer worse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, the blind, the sky is no less blue because the blind man cannot see it. Right. Oh, so it is. It is. It so it is what it is. And so what's really fascinating is understand that things are for who they're for and they're not for who they're not for. Like, I don't ever try to get somebody to do something. Mm. Like, I am, people talk about hard closing. I'm the softest closing brother you'll ever see in your life. Like, yeah. buy it or don't buy it. If yeah. it's for you, you'll know it. If it's not, you know, you'll know that too. Yeah. I ain't going to beg you, I ain't going to bug you. If I got to drag you in, I have to drag you around. And I'm too old and I'm too tired, so I don't want to drag anybody around. Right? So, so all of that, just to say people who understand who they are, my coaching program, my higher level coaching program, my inner circle is designed to help people get stuck, who are stuck between 20,000 and 50,000 a month get to half a million a month. Mm -hmm. Or people who are stuck at 200,000 a month who want to get to 800,000 a month. Mm -hmm. It's not for, it's not, my higher level coaching program is not to help people get to 20, people say, I want to get to 40,000 a month. They fill out an application, I want to get to 40,000 a month. This is not the program for yeah, you, yeah. right? But the Offer Mastery Bootcamp might be the program for them. Mm -hmm. So somebody who's not yet making 20,000 a month or 30,000 a month. No, so it. life changing thing, bro. Yeah. No, so I'm. Yeah. So I, I'm. I'm. I, was, I remember this was back in I don't know 2007, 2008. Maybe no, it's 2006 probably. I was. Um, I was making about thirty thousand a month. I went to this Robert G. Allen, like uh, wealth retreat, and there were about seven hundred people there. He asked for people to come and give testimonies. I come up, yeah, I've been listening to your program because I had one of his audio programs in my car for like six years. I mean, it was. I just listened to it every time I got in my car. I listened to it right. And I said, yeah, I've been reading your books and like following your programs and your coaching stuff for um, a couple years now. And like, I used to be a trash man making $6.25 an hour. Now, you know, I make, um, I'm making 30,000 a month and I, my expenses are only 5,000 a month. I'm living like a king. And uh, Robert Allen said, you're doing really good. He said, 30,000 a month, huh? That's really good. You're about to have a breakthrough to the really big money. I'm like, did he just diss my 30,000 a month in front of these 700 people? That's the first thing I thought, right? right. The second thing I thought was, wait, there's a level where thirty thousand a month is not that much money. That's the level I'm ready to get yeah, to, right? right? And so, and so now, when I think about the fact that when I was at thirty thousand a month, I really thought I was a baller. Oh. <laughs> I, and that's, not, I thought I'm, I'm making fun of me, right, not right. somebody else who's at thirty thousand. Right. I really thought I was a baller. Yeah. I'm like, like I don't want to have a day go by where I don't make thirty thousand yeah. dollars. That's yeah. like something. Anyway, yeah. so it's just so that's a totally different mindset. Yeah, yeah. Right. And how 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 important is mindset um, on your way to oh. maximizing who you are? So 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 as a human being, you have a superpower. Most people most people have never tapped into their superpower. And I promise you, everybody has a superpower, and they are either using it, or the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism is using their superpower against them. Mm. 
right? Yeah. So, and the super, your greatest superpower as a human being, there's something dogs don't have, cats don't have, lions, tigers, and bears don't have, alligators and giraffes, superpower. You ready? Mm -hmm. Expectation. Mm. Human beings, greatest superpower. Mm. Your ability to expect an outcome is your greatest superpower. In mm. fact, this building that we are in right now, it exists because somebody expected it to exist so much that they took the idea of it from their mind, put it on a piece of paper so that other people could see their expectation and, and now it's a physical place. Wow. Nothing, it is impossible for anything that's man-made to exist in our society without it first existing in somebody's expectation. Wow. Jesus said, he said, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Mm -hmm. See, people say, but is it possible for me to make a million dollars? You're asking the wrong question. Mm -hmm. Here's the right question. Is it possible for you to believe mm -hmm. that you can make a million dollars? Mm -hmm. Because when you can believe it, oh, you can definitely achieve it. Not, it's not magic. Right. It's power. Right. There's a difference. Like expectation is power. Yeah. And if you don't understand how to harness that power, the news media, the movies, the songs that you listen to, they're gonna harness that power and they're gonna cause you to expect outcomes that you don't desire mm -hmm. and you are gonna keep producing results that you don't desire. Man, powerful. 100. Man, all right, so, so finish this statement for me. Uh, I am. I am made in the image of God. Mm. Therefore, I am who he says I am. Mm. I can do what he says I can do mm. and I will have all that he has for me. Wow, powerful. When it's all said and done, I will be. When it's all said and done, I will be becoming more like the word. Mm, love it, love it. I want everyone who crosses my path to know that they are loved mm. and they are important to me because they're important to God. Mm. No, I love that, I love that. If you, if you could go back and talk to your 18 year old self, what advice are you giving young Myron Golden? Quit tripping, boy. <laughs> um, I, I would say that it's easier than you think it is. Mm -hmm. It's closer than it feels like it is. Mm -hmm. Don't put it off, do it now. Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell the 18 year old version of myself. Mm -hmm. Like everything that is supposed to exist outside of you, the seed for that is already inside of you. Don't you find it fascinating that in order for a tree to grow, the seed has to go in the ground. Mm -hmm. The first thing God said to a human being is be fruitful, which means there's a seed in us. Uh -huh. But he made man from the dust of the ground. Uh -huh. So we allow God to cultivate the seed that he put in this ground, uh -huh. and then it produces the fruit that we're supposed to produce. Mm. Man, love it, love it. So far, right, like you've, you've made a lot of money, right? What would you say is the most extravagant thing you've done with money? Definitely bought my Rolls Royce okay. and paid and paid cash for it. And I hate paying cash for cars, mm. but I paid cash for it because it took the banks too long to come up with the financing program. So I said, I'll just write a check for it and go back and finance it later. But I, then I didn't just because I didn't. Right. <laughs> so that definitely the most extravagant thing. And, and then from a, from an impact perspective, what would you say is the most impactful thing you've done with money? Um, demonstrated to my children that entrepreneurship is the path to financial freedom. Mm -hmm. That's the most impactful thing that I've done with money. Yeah. To show my, like, to think that my son and my daughter are both entrepreneurs and brilliant entrepreneurs in their own right. Yeah. And if I died today, financially, oh, I don't have to worry about them. Mm -hmm. They got it figured out. Yeah. 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 At yeah. 30 and 32. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Um, all right. And, and so um, what advice would you give somebody right now has a nine to five, uh, they're wanting to, to start a business. Um, you know, what advice would you give to that side hustler? Stop trying to be, stop trying to be balanced and be obsessed. Like, Ooh. be focused. Like, you're so out of balance. All you care about is making money. You're so out of balance. All you do is care about working. All you do is you're building your business. Like, balance is not the objective of life. Uh. It's a season. Uh. It's never winter and summer in the same place at the same time. Uh. And you're never going to be in focus and in balance at the same time. Uh. When you're in focus, you're out of balance, and when you're in balance, you're out of focus. And if you're broke, you don't deserve balance. Mm. Be focused. How long should you be focused? Until you make enough money to buy some balance. <laughs> Real talk. Big bars, big bars. People sitting at home yeah. watching, watching TV and you broke. Yeah, yeah. As I live and breathe, God knows I'm telling the truth. Mm -hmm. My kids were growing up, we didn't have a television. You know why? Because I didn't want to be watching somebody else live their dream while we were living a nightmare. Mm. 
I'm not gonna do it. Nah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. All right, we gonna do a uh, quick lightning round. Lightning round. Lightning round. Lightning. All right, so we're we're in uh, you know inside the vault literally, um, and you know in the bank there's some banking terms. So we're gonna do uh, you know we're gonna flip these banking terms, right? And there so go. uh, we're gonna do deposit slip. Mm -hmm. uh, and a deposit slip, you go into the bank, you put money inside the bank. For us, deposit slip is a mistake, a slip up, right? Uh, that you've done with money. So what has been your biggest deposit slip? Um, not hiring the best accountant. Mm. It's easy to make, you know what's easy for an entrepreneur? Make a million dollars, two million dollars, ten million dollars, that's easy. Yeah. You know what's hard? Accounting for it. Mm. Hiring a less than stellar accountant yeah. could be the kiss of death for your business. Mm. And literally, like I hired an accountant who was a friend of mine. Mm. He moved to Australia four months before I got audited by the IRS. Wow. I spent the next four years of my life in IRS hell. Wow. So, wow. yeah, not hiring a good account. Wow. Uh, charge off, right? Uh, when you borrow money from the bank, you don't pay the money back, the, the bank tries to get the money, um, and they eventually charge you off. Uh, what type of people or mindsets did you have to charge off on your journey? Um, negative naysayers. Mm. Like I don't, I don't even, I, I, I don't do negative energy. Yeah. I don't entertain it. Yeah. I don't capitulate to it. Yeah. Somebody says it's a terrible day. Well, it's not really a terrible day. You're just focused on the terrible aspects of your day. Yeah. Right. Um, so just negative Nellies, negative naysayers. Yeah. I just, I don't. It's not that I don't like them. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm not going to get on your vibe. Yeah. I'm not going to allow you, you to make me vibrate at your frequency. Yeah. So if somebody says something negative, I'll say, yeah, but it's a beautiful day. Oh, it's it's raining. Yeah, the flower shortage. You need rain. Like, here's the, here's the reality. It's impossible for something negative to exist in the world without something positive existing around that same exact topic. Mm. Have you ever seen a one-sided piece of paper? Mm, never. One-sided pancake? Never. One-sided piece of bread? Never. One-sided coin? Never. You know why? Because mm. it cannot exist. Mm. It's impossible for anything to exist with one side. Wow. And so we get the side we're focused on. Big bar, big bar. Last but not least, ATM, right? So uh, ATM, put your card in, you take the money out. You've, you've given us so many, like, I'm a, I need to rewatch this, right? Uh, ATM for us is another teachable moment. Give our insiders another teachable moment. The best advice I can give anybody, I know people, like, you don't really understand what I'm saying unless you really hear me. The best advice I can give anybody is to learn the truth about life. Here's why. Jesus said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See, people don't realize any area of your life in which you are not free, the reason you are not free is because you do not know the truth. If you're not, true in your, if you're not free in your relationships, there's something about relationships you don't understand the truth about. If you're not free in your finances, there's something about finance you believe a lie about. The sooner you learn and apply the truth to any aspect of your life, the sooner that area of your life becomes free. Man, man. Powerful, y'all. Powerful. Listen, Myron Golden has really given you the blueprint on how to maximize your income, take it to the next level. We even gave you the math, right, to increase your business by 1,280% in just four moves. You have to join the Make More Office Challenge because I promise you there is no, there's no way on God's green earth that you spend five days with this man that you don't become better and make more money uh, by, by, by doing exactly what he's saying. So make sure you go to offersinsidethevault.com in order to join the challenge. Uh, but if somebody wanted to connect with you, uh, where can they find you? Uh, MyronGolden.com or on Instagram at MyronGolden. Just make sure there's no dashes, no spaces, no dots. There's a lot of fake ones out there. Just at M-Y-R-O-N-G-O-L-D-E-N. All right, y'all. Uh, a powerful episode. I promise you, you're going to have to go back. But even better, right, is to make sure you join the Make More Offers Challenge. OffersInsideTheVault.com. OffersInsideTheVault.com to join the challenge. Uh, we are closing out the vault. Another powerful episode. Make sure you, you join our community of insiders. Text the word INSIDERS to 646-687-4152. You'll get exclusive behind the scene information, interviews that you ain't never seen before, but just join us, become an insider. Follow us on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. Me, I am Ash Cash. 
Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at Inside the Vault. We'll see you next time for another powerful episode in God's will. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't ask cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.